Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, former Theranos CEO Elizabeth Holmes has been convicted of duping investors and now faces years of prison time. It's cold out there, but nowhere near as cold as we were yesterday morning. We'll get an update on your forecast. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday, January 4th, 2022. Thanks for joining us this morning and not as cold as yesterday, but I'm glad I prepared for it because uh, it's still kind of cold. Yeah, 42 compared to what was the official low yesterday morning? We ended up getting down to 26 yesterday. Yeah, so that was it was bitterly cold than Sunday morning. So yeah, a little layer of clouds decided to slide in overnight. And so just like when you're, you know, sitting there and kind of chilly on the couch and throw a blanket over you, that's exactly what Mother Nature did. So a little bit of a blanket of clouds right now. And uh, you can see that on the satellite picture, just kind of some uh, low mid-level clouds. They will start to clear out. As a matter of fact, it kind of depends on where you are. And a little more, a little bit more in the way of some clear skies out there in portions of the hill country. So yes, once again, temperatures are flirting with freezing around comfort. 35 at Lotus, 44 out there at the airport. And they s may actually kind of scooch on out of here right around sunrise. If they do, just before or just as the sun is coming up, then we could drop down. I'm still going for upper 30s here in town. I think we'll drop down a couple of more notches before it's all said and done. A little bit of a breeze, not much, but we do have a little bit of a wind chill to deal with. 29 Kerrville, 39 here in town. The allergens, Mountain Cedar is on the high side, although it did come down from the previous day's reading. Mold really went up on yesterday's count and throughout the rest of the morning. Yeah, grab a jacket. I mean, you're still gonna need it. Still gonna need a jacket really every morning this week even though it won't be freezing now for until, well, here in town up until maybe Friday. More on that coming up. 37 this morning, mostly cloudy skies. High temperature, very nice, mostly sunny, 65. So a lot warmer than yesterday, warmer still tomorrow. Then we have a couple of fronts down the road. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Mark. Thank you, Mike. Now to the long-awaited verdict in the trial of former tech billionaire Elizabeth Holmes. After more than 50 hours of deliberations, the jury has decided her fate. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has the details. This morning, the woman once called the next Steve Jobs could be facing decades in prison after a jury found her guilty of knowingly misleading investors about her company's blood testing technology. This verdict was definitely a mixed bag. On Monday, a jury convicted Elizabeth Holmes on some of the 11 fraud charges she faced, including a guilty verdict on four counts of defrauding the company's investors. But she was found not guilty on four counts of committing fraud against patients. That was a harder case for the government to make. There were more leaps that they had to go through in order to show the jury that this was wire fraud. Remember, this was a case about wire fraud, not about malpractice. The jury was unable to reach a decision on three other charges. Home sitting wearing a mask in court had no visible reaction as the verdicts were read. Back in 2015, she topped the Forbes list of America's richest self-made women. Her net worth at age 31 was $4.5 billion. She claimed her company's device performed several diagnostic tests with only a single drop of blood, but then came allegations that the blood testing technology did not work as advertised. During her trial, Holmes took the stand for seven days, denying she misled anyone. She also claimed that Theranos Chief Operating Officer Ramesh Sunny Balwani was physically and emotionally abusive toward her, accusing him of controlling her daily life while the two were in a relationship, claims he denies. I think some of that may not have been uh, as significant for the jury as her defense anticipated. While on the stand, Holmes said, quote, of course not, when asked if investors had lost money because she misled them. But during an interview with investigators before the trial, she acknowledged a number of her prior claims were not accurate. I know that we made so many mistakes. A sentencing date has not been scheduled. Holmes faces up to 20 years in prison for each guilty count, but she's expected to face far less than the maximum sentence. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. More than a million people in the U.S. were diagnosed with the virus yesterday. That's the highest number of cases reported by any country in a single day since the pandemic began. The FDA has now cleared use of Pfizer's COVID booster shots, kids ages 12 to 15, expanding access to an extra dose that could help fight against the Omicron variant. The CDC is expected to sign off midweek and shots could be available as early as Thursday. Frontline workers who are seeing mostly the unvaccinated in hospitals are warning that some emergency rooms are at a breaking point and are urging people to be get vaccinated. 
Majority Leader Chuck Schumer says the Senate will vote soon on changing filibuster rules in an effort to advance stalled voting rights legislation. Pointing to the January 6th attack on the Capitol, the New York Democrat says the rule changes are needed to protect the nation's democracy. Right now, Democrats are trying to overcome the 60 vote threshold needed to stop a Republican filibuster that's blocking their election law package. Schumer says the Senate will debate and consider the rule changes on or before January 17th. In Colorado, investigators looking for the cause of that wildfire that destroyed nearly a thousand homes and buildings have narrowed their search to a sparsely populated neighborhood near Boulder. Authorities say it's the same area where a passerby captured video of a burning shed on the day the fire began. The Boulder County Sheriff says it could be weeks before authorities release details on the investigation. Experts from the FBI, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms and Explosives and the U.S. Forest Service are all helping. Meanwhile, the search continues for two people still missing and survivors sorted through the charred, charred remnants of their homes. Right now, 435, about 42 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, we're going to tell you which deals to be on the lookout for this month when it comes to workout equipment. And next, we hear from Becky Hammond now that she's officially head coach of the Las Vegas Aces. Plus, the Spurs are in Toronto tonight. And a quick look at the roads with Trans Guide looking out there at I-35 at Evans Road. Uh, things are moving right now. It's a lot of people on the road right there. Highway 281 uh, looking pretty empty at this hour. And outside with live cam. Yeah, grab a coat. Even though the clouds are in place, it's still very, very cool out there uh, for your Tuesday morning as we continue to get the work week rolling. You're watching GMSA. We will be right back. Becky Hammond will get her wish as a head coach. Well, it's not the NBA yet. It is with her old team. The San Antonio Stars have moved to Vegas to become the Aces. Even though we knew about it last week, the official announcement wasn't until yesterday. Becky's with the Spurs in Toronto for today's game against the Raptors. Hammond agreed to a five-year contract with Las Vegas following her 16-year playing career that included eight years with the New York Liberty beginning in 1999. And after eight seasons on the Spurs bench, she's making this move. Here's what Becky had to say about what, when she got the call from team president Nikki Fargus. When she first called, I had no intentions of leaving the NBA at this point. Um, you know, and after talking to her and, and wrestling and throwing around different ideas and stuff, um, obviously I, I came to the conclusion that uh, this was the best spot for me and my family and an opportunity for me to... Uh, you know, sit in the big chair and, and, and be a head coach of, of a major professional sports league. And so um, I feel like I'm ready to have my own team. Um, and this is the organization that made it very, very obvious. They wanted me really, really bad. Hammond was interviewed for several NBA head coaching vacancies, most recent with the Portland Trailblazers, but the job was given to Chauncey Billups. Meanwhile, the Spurs are north of the border in Toronto. We mentioned that, as uh, at least most of the team is, as the Silver Black is still dealing with their worst COVID outbreak of the season so far. Lonnie Walker and Doug McDermott have gone to the league's health and safety protocols, while DeJounte Murray is working himself back after missing the last three games. They're in the middle of a seven game road trip and it's their second longest of the season compared to the eight game rodeo road trip this year. The shorthanded Spurs have already lost two and still have five games left. Senator Yaka Pertle says the team needs to stay strong mentally. It's like a, a fighter's mentality. You gotta, you gotta look at it in a like next man up type of, type of way. A lot of teams are struggling with, with players out. So yeah, like I said, just about having the right mentality, I think. San Antonio Spurs and the Toronto Raptors tip off tonight at 6. Then they swing by Boston on Wednesday to take on the Celtics. They play 76ers on Friday and then the Brooklyn Nets coming up on Sunday. And that's a look at morning sports. And time now is 441 and about 42 degrees out there. If you're looking to start off the new year strong, we're going to tell you which fitness equipment is good for the right price. And next, a first look at what's next for some vacationers stuck in paradise after testing positive for COVID. And welcome back. It's 444. Many U.S. travelers are unable to return home from their holiday vacation after testing positive for COVID-19. ABC's Gio Benitez has the details in today's GMA First Look. 
And this morning's GMA First Look, COVID positive and stuck in paradise. We came to uh, Belize for our holiday season with my uh, wife and daughter. We flew down on uh, December 24th and we're planning on going back on uh, December 31st. Cameron Wilson from Brooklyn is stuck in Belize. Despite being vaccinated and boosted, he and his wife tested positive before their flight back home. Now he's stuck in a hotel room specifically for people with COVID. With the situation with the COVID as it is now, I think I would be hesitant to recommend that anyone leave the country. I know people will. And we'll have more of their story coming up at 7 a.m., plus a closer look at the thousands of flight cancellations right here at home. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. Well, many of us are trying to get fit this year, and you'll need some good equipment to help you do that. Here's 12 on your size, Marilyn Morris, with the best buys for January. New year, new goals. If you're looking to start off strong, you may be shopping for fitness equipment. There may not be a ton of big sales this month, but you can still find great value on great products. Things like ellipticals and treadmills, if you want to start a home gym, they can run upwards of $4,000, but there are some great options out there that are way, way less. Consumer Reports tracks prices on its top tested products all year. So here's what to look for in January. Tracking treadmills. This Horizon 7.0 AT is now $900. $99 at Horizon Fitness. High end ellipticals cost upwards of $2,500, but you can still get a good machine for less than half that. The Schwinn 470 elliptical is $999 at Amazon, Walmart, and Best Buy. Fitness trackers are popular gadgets to help you reach your goals. There are plenty of options out there to suit every need and every budget. Some have fancy features like heart rate monitoring, sleep tracking, where others are much more simple and bare bones and will count your steps and give you just the right amount of data. The Garmin Forerunner 25 Fitness Tracker is $120 at Walmart. It aced most of Consumer Reports tests and claims a battery life of nine days. Now to the couch and binging on TV. Sound bars can be a great upgrade. The Sonos Beam sound bar is on sale for $350 at Best Buy. Sonos products rarely go on sale and this is $30 better than Black Friday. And January white sales are still a thing, so it can be a great time to treat yourself to new sheets and towels. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. Well, knock on plexiglass. <laughs> it's still pretty early out there. Very light traffic. We're not seeing any problems on any of these cameras. Do you see anything out there yet, Steph? No, I, mm -hmm. I didn't earlier either. Um, but there are people traveling. It's just very, very light. Yeah. Some schools are back. I know I think Northside went back yesterday. So we're kind of slowly right. getting back into a routine here. Some schools this morning as mm -hmm. well, starting on a Tuesday. So we'll see more and more out there on the roads. We'll have you covered on traffic all morning long, along with uh, Mike Osterhage. Michael, good morning to you again. Sir. Good morning. Yeah, it's uh, it's chilly this morning, but nowhere near as cold as what it has been the past couple of days. So still grab a coat for you and head out. You might want to warm up the car just a little bit there. And we're going to have another decent looking sunrise. We are going to have a few clouds still hanging around here and that's uh, can't really see them obviously right now, but that's what is helping to keep temperatures up. So we're at 44 as opposed to at this time yesterday, we were already down right around the upper 20s. Again, we remember we had uh, dropped down below freezing before midnight, even Sunday evening, and we were below freezing for a real long chunk of time. But the reason for this is the fact that we do have those clouds out there. Now it's 34 in Holota, so in your backyard, maybe freezing, same thing up around Comfort. So not everybody is has that blanket on top of us. We still have really, really dry air, and there's hardly any bit of a breeze. So we've got two of the three ingredients to get cold temperatures, but we've got again that blanket on top of us, so not completely clear skies. This is the water vapor imagery, and this is where some of these clouds are coming from. And then notice how the darker shade out there to the northwest. So this is all going to continue to work its way on out of here, and we may actually clear out by just after sunrise and going into the latter portion of the uh, the morning commute. So that would allow temperatures then to briefly drop down kind of quickly. So I'm still going for 37 this morning. Now, as far as the humidity, and this is always a good way to help track temperatures, especially low temperatures, it will start to creep up here just a little bit, not a huge jump in the humidity, despite the fact we're going to be up in the mid 70s tomorrow, mid 60s today, mid 70s tomorrow, still the morning low temperatures are going to be on the, the cool side. Then we get another front coming through here 
Thursday down into Friday, close to freezing Friday, shoot right back up over the weekend and then right back down starting off next week. So yeah, kind of a little roller coaster action. We do at least have a couple of fronts in the forecast once again. So here's long range computer model and different computer model runs, you know, have different solutions sometimes. When I first got into work, looked at this, it looked a little, little being the operative word, more promising for a couple of showers by the weekend. I think it's almost wishful thinking now. More clouds around here on Friday, perhaps a sprinkle or two early on Saturday, and then even going into Sunday. We'll have a lot of clouds hanging around here this weekend. Some sunshine thrown in. And yeah, some rain off to the east. Not really a whole heck of a lot in our area. There may be one or two of those showers. Again, just kind of holding out hope for that. But then that's going to be... Uh, getting pushed on out of here with another front that will move through just in time for the first part of next week because weekend's going to be mild again. So 58 today at noon, mostly sunny skies. Got the clouds right now. They're going to clear out fairly quickly and then we hit up a high temperature of 65. So we'll be at or even just a couple of notches above normal. Good looking afternoon and then it's going to be cool again tomorrow morning, but staying much milder, a little bit above normal, actually up the 70s and then 62 on Thursday. So we get that front moving through here and we're going to come close. I think it, obviously this is dependent on cloud cover once again, how uh, how close we get to freezing on Friday and how many folks get close to freezing. Darn, I just jumped past that again. So <laughs> I do that all the time. That's OK. Here, we'll, there you we'll, go. We'll do this. There we go. Oh, OK. A couple of button clicks and we're all set. Very okay. mild over the weekend, though. Lots oh, of clouds. That's okay. good news. Got it. And if that Front. is not. That's, right. that's, epiphany, that's not so. right. Not take right. down your decoration. Yes, it's not take it. Well, <laughs> well, you could. <laughs> it's not tree pickup day or anything like that. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Mike, did you hear that uh, no one won Powerball last night? Yes, it's 575 now. Mm. Whew, we're going to okay. show you our numbers in a second. Uh, here, first of all, 451, about 42 degrees. And coming up next, a first look at tonight's final season of Blackish on ABC. Plus, true crime fans have something else to watch on Netflix. Here are all your lottery numbers. Pick three, 315, Fireball 9, Daily 4, 4609, Fireball 2. Cash 5, 1, 2, 6, 23, 31. Texas 2-step, 2, 21, 29, 33, Bonus Ball 21. And like Mark was talking about, Powerball 2, 13, 32, 33, 48, Powerball 22, Power Play 2. Netflix is starting off the new year with more true crime, plus the final season of Black is starts tonight on ABC. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. <laughs> I'm going to need my family to be black. Not black-ish, but black. It's time to start saying goodbye to black -ish. The critically acclaimed sitcom's final season starts tonight and show star Marseille Martin, who started on the series when she was just nine. She's 17 now, tells us making this final season was bittersweet. It was lots of tears and it was lots of um, joy as well. I mean, I feel like it was very lighthearted. And because, um, you know, we we are all really proud of what we have made. The season premiere goes big with former First Lady Michelle Obama as a special guest star tonight on ABC. The whole world is attracted to Times Square. If you want to start the year with some true crime, there's a new season of the Netflix series Crime Scene. Crime Scene, the Times Square killer, re-examines a string of brutal killings in Manhattan in the late 70s and early 80s. Oscar-nominated filmmaker Joe Berlinger directed the series, telling me it's almost in our DNA to watch this kind of stuff. From the days we were hunter-gatherers in caves, you walked out each day and you were wired to, to be aware of danger, to look the other way and make sure something wasn't coming at at you. So like, I actually think genetically we're wired for danger and we like to stare danger in the eye. Crime Scene, the Times Square Killer is on Netflix now. And a shiny happy birthday to Michael Stipe, the REM frontman is 62 today. While holy moly sideline reporter Jeannie Mai is 43. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athens in ABC News, Los Angeles. <laughs> Time now is 456 and about 41 degrees out there. Still ahead on GMSA over the last week, a record 325,000 more children tested positive for COVID in the U.S. How local school districts are responding to the increase in numbers. And it is officially the end of the road for BlackBerry. We're going to tell you about today's shutdown coming up in Tech Bites.
And we're checking the roads with Trans Guide right now. There's not a soul out there. 281 and Hiller. Okay, here comes a few cars. <laughs> uh, Highway 90 to I-35. Yes, a few cars as well. But we are expecting traffic to build up in the next two hours. And we're going to keep you an eye on things right here on GMSA. We've got uh, two hours to go. We'll be right back. Live from Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making news overnight, four vehicles involved in a crash on the city's north side. What police are saying about how it happened coming up. I'm ABC's M. Wynn in Washington. COVID-19 cases and hospitalizations continue to break records. This as scientists learn more about a new variant coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, it is chilly out there. We're at 41 degrees, but you know, it's not as cold as yesterday morning. And good morning to you. It's Tuesday, January 4th. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. I know some people are starting school today. Some people started yesterday, but either way, a chilly start. Yes, and we'll take low to mid 40s over low to mid 20s, right, Mike? I guess it depends on who you are, but yeah, it's not quite as just that really bone chilling cold out there. And that's because we did have a little blanket of clouds that slid in overnight. So yes, 41 degrees. We're not done cooling down though. We will still drop down a few more degrees before it's all said and done. Still got very dry air. That bottom number dew points at 26 and there's hardly any breeze out there. So again, Two of the three components the past couple of mornings we have had, well, except for uh, Sunday morning, it was very, very windy. But yesterday, of course, we did have clear skies, dry air, and very light or no wind. Now, it is going to be warm today. We're going to make it up into the mid-60s later on. So we'll be finally at or even a little bit above normal. The aquifer yesterday dropped down three-tenths of a foot, and the allergens, mountain seed are still on the high side, but it did come down from the previous day, and mold are also on the high side. Here's a look at the uh, satellite picture. Picture, and there's some of those low clouds hanging around here. And again, they've, they're kind of uh, scooching on out of portions of the hill country. That's why it's a little bit cooler there. And as those clouds continue to move on out, if we lose that blanket, then temperatures will drop down very quickly. I think we make a slow kind of steady decline and then we're going to be again once those clouds move on out by maybe sunrise or so we could actually kind of drop down a few more degrees before we start to warm up. There is a little bit of a wind chill to deal with 27 at Kerrville 38 here in town Again, not much of a, uh, a breeze, so mostly sunny today mid 60s and then tomorrow it is going to be much warmer We're going to make it up into the kind of pushing at the mid 70s and then we have another front that moves on through here and that's going to be tomorrow night into Thursday so it's going to be a little cooler on Thursday and then we'll continue to drop down so it looks like another freeze by Friday morning close to it not any mid 20s around here though and then the weekend bounce right back mostly cloudy it is going to be milder over the weekend and hopefully hopefully a shower or two more on that coming up in just a couple of minutes traffic authority Stephen is out today so we're going to take a look around town if you're getting ready to hit the highways and byways one car let's count the cars there's <laughs> two three okay so so far four five six where elsewhere around town oh there's a whole bunch over there ten of probate but everything's moving along very well no problems as of right now we'll keep you informed all morning long Thank you, Mike. New this morning, San Antonio police are trying to figure out what led up to a crash involving four vehicles overnight. It happened in the 3000 block of North Loop 1604 West near Bitters. SAPD says as a result of the crash, two people were taken to a hospital in stable condition with minor injuries. So far, police don't know what caused the crash yet, but they say speed may have been a factor. School is back in session across the Alamo City as Metro Health upgraded the COVID risk level to severe. And to top it off, vaccine rates for kids across Texas remain low. Sarah Costa joins us live with what parents need to know. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Mark and Steph. It all comes as get this the very first day of NISD, one of the biggest school districts here in the San Antonio area. More than 1,200 staff members called out sick, requiring 926 substitute teachers. But let's get to those low vaccine rates for kids here in Texas. According to data from the CDC, or from, excuse me, from the Mayo Clinic, 10.6% of kids 5 to 11 in Texas are fully vaccinated. That percentage goes up to 52% for 12 to 17 year olds. Local doctors hope the number of kids getting vaccinated goes up amid the surge in COVID-19 cases and boosters are also extremely important when it comes to this Omicron variant. For kids too young to get the shot, masks are key to staying healthy. 
like a KN95 or an N95 mask, or at the very least, a surgical mask, a plain old face cloth covering, it's just not going to cut it. As it stands now, Moderna and Johnson & Johnson limit vaccine shots to those 18 and older. Pfizer's first two shots are approved for children as young as five. And of course, yesterday, the CDC did approve boosters for 12 to 15 year olds. Of course, that is the Pfizer vaccine. But now, back out here live, we are in front of the Bear County Sheriff's Office and Adult Detention Center, where they're going to be holding a free, no appointment required vaccine clinic with a Pfizer vaccine starting at 630 this morning. Live from downtown, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Steph. Meanwhile, vaccine boosters will likely, likely start rolling out to even younger Americans nationwide. ABC's M. Wynn has the latest. This morning, top health officials urging parents to get their children ready for COVID-19 vaccine boosters. The FDA authorizing Pfizer boosters for 12 to 15 year olds and recommending everyone 12 and older originally vaccinated with Pfizer get their booster after five months instead of six. It's more important now than ever for all teens to go out there and get all three of their vaccinations. The CDC still has to sign off on the expanded eligibility expected when it's expert advisory panel meets tomorrow. This comes as millions of kids head back to school with the Omicron variant already disrupting classes. In LA, the return to school next week is now delayed with all students and employees required to get tested before heading onto campus. The nation's post-holiday surge in COVID cases is breaking records. Over a million people in the U.S. were diagnosed with the virus just yesterday, the highest number of cases in a single day since the pandemic started. Pediatric cases are at an all-time high, with 325,000 more children testing positive in the last week. We have patients in all age brackets with no medical history. The sickest of the sick that we are seeing now are the patients that are not vaccinated. And now, scientists are tracking a new variant in southern France, where at least 12 people have been infected. Doctors are calling it a highly mutated variant. Just have to keep track of it. It has been around for almost a month, and we haven't really seen it make a big impact, so uh, I'm cautiously optimistic. Here in Washington, the seven-day COVID-19 positivity rate at the U.S. Capitol jumped from 1% to 13%, with more than half of those infections linked to the Omicron variant. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. The rising COVID case is also leading to more hospitalizations. Here in Bear County, 506 people are in local hospitals. 22 of them are pediatric patients. In response, the Department of State Health Services is sending out-of-state nurses to San Antonio and other surrounding counties to help. A little more than 400 nurses and some respiratory therapists are expected. This will be the fourth time since the pandemic began that the state has used contract nurses from out-of-state. And time now, it's 5.07 and about 41 degrees out there. Still ahead, officially the end for BlackBerry. Why the devices stop working after today. Also next, how a new medical procedure could bring hope to patients whose trachea has been damaged due to severe illness. And outside with live cam. Saw a couple more fronts of Mike's extended forecast. We'll get an update on when those store, uh, fronts, rather. I don't know if they'll bring storms. I'm going to ask him more specifics. As I reach for words this morning, it's Tuesday. You're watching GMSA. 511 for the first time. A team of surgeons has successfully transplanted a human trachea. It could eventually save thousands of people who suffer from birth defects, cancer, or injury to their windpipes due to COVID intubation. Ursula Perry shows us how it's possible. 57-year-old Sonia Sane takes nothing for granted, including daily walks through the neighborhood with her niece, Monique. Sane had a severe asthma attack back in 2014, and she had to have several emergency intubations to save her life. They kept removing it to see if I can breathe on my own. And apparently them doing that, they damaged the trait. Sane had to breathe through a surgical hole in her neck and still has that opening there. I have a plug that I have to push in so it holds the air so I can talk. For years, she was in constant danger of having her trachea collapse and then suffocating. Dr. Gendon says that the difficulty with human transplantation is establishing blood flow. 
We're using a high-powered microscope, hooking up these little blood vessels using a suture that's uh, thinner than a human hair. It's actually difficult to see without a microscope. Last January, in an 18-hour-long surgery, doctors removed Sane's damaged trachea. They replaced it with a donor organ and blood vessels. Sane is still recovering but can play with her grandkids and stroll with her niece again. She wants her survival story to inspire others. I want people to see that just because there's a setback in your life, that it stops. Early on in the pandemic, mechanical ventilation was considered an important part of COVID treatment. Now we have many other treatments and it's considered a last resort. Reports show that 5% of everyone who was put on a mechanical ventilator long term with COVID ended up with chronic airway problems and permanent damage to their trachea. Ursula Perry, KSAT 12 News. 513 about 40 degrees and still ahead we're going to tell you about, uh, more about Netgear's newest Wi-Fi router for smaller homes plus a new smart dog collar can help you monitor your pet's health what is an overpass come on question is that an s or a five I think it's a five I thought so Ah, frustration loading. Nobody wants more robot tests, but we could all use more ways to save. Charlotte for Rob Ott for Rob Ott. Error, human. Switch the Geico for more ways to save. What makes Febreze Air Effects different? While cheaper aerosols rely on artificial propellants, Febreze uses a 100% natural propellant. Check it out. Pressure created by what's in your air makes the bottle spray, which means freshness everyone will love. Febreze. Not only do Centrum Multigummies taste great, they help support your immune defenses too. Because a healthy life starts with a healthy immune system. With vitamin C and D and zinc, getting out there has never tasted so good. Try Centrum Multigummies. We mentioned it was about to happen, and as of today, the classic BlackBerry device will no longer be operational. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, the end of the line for older Blackberries. Devices using the company's legacy operating systems no longer work as of today. Android-powered devices with the BlackBerry name aren't affected. At its peak, BlackBerry had more than 80 million active users. A new Wi-Fi router designed for smaller homes just hit the market. The new Nighthawk supports eight Wi-Fi streams at a time and has four ports for tethering consoles and computers. It'll cost you $400. And finally, a new smart collar is being called an Apple Watch for your dog. The collar by Invoxia can monitor a dog's heart rate and breathing no matter how much fur it has. It's expected to hit the market this summer for about $100 and comes with a GPS tracker. So basically it can tell you if your dog is out of shape or just a little husky. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. Why not eliminate the middleman and just get your dog an Apple Watch? I, mean, I got Truman one. He likes the big face. Yeah, yeah it's real, looks really it, good. He can see it better. Yeah, yeah. He, he's not very active, but uh, it looks looks good on him. What's that? Tennis ball in the backyard. A tennis ball in the backyard. He's like, yeah, he's too busy for that. Uh, let's take a look at traffic together here as a team. Steven is out today and right now very, very light traffic. 37. Mm -hmm. There's 1604 John Peace Boulevard. Of course, it's still only 518 as Mike strolls over into the traffic lab. You see anything showing up over nope. there, Mike? I'm looking at about uh, 20 different cameras over there and everything's moving along very well. Again, well, there's hardly any traffic out there. So good news. if you want to, uh, you know, get a get a jump on the Tuesday morning rush. Yes. So. Okay. I know All people right. were posting yesterday with the rush to yeah. the uh, different drive through lines. <laughs> right. And, and also we're talking about um, look the other direction. Oh. Oh, gosh. I there, it looks like you're looking <laughs> But you're not there. You need to flip-flop these. <laughs> Us out. Hey, uh, you do have to bundle up this morning. I don't know if you have to bundle up this much, but I, that's just an adorable little picture with Aww. his tongue sticking out as well and the puffball on top of the, the hat. Um, yeah, do wear a coat, though, because uh, we do have some pretty chilly temperatures, although a uh, layer of clouds moved on in overnight. And so, again, just like, you know, when you put a blanket on top of you, that helped to uh, keep us on the warmer side. 41 degrees right now. Rio Medina has now dropped down to freezing close to it in Helotus, Hondo, obviously. And as the skies continue to clear out, we are seeing kind of a, a back edge of these clouds. We will see temperatures drop down. So it'll just be like pulling the blanket on off of us. We still have 
have very dry air out there, and that's going to remain the case. Actually, dew points only went up about what four five six seven degrees or so compared to this time yesterday so still really dry air we could in theory drop down but again we've got that blanket on top of us and dew point temperatures will continue to after a very low this morning going to creep up a little bit in the next couple of days and that's going to hold low temperatures up so it won't be as cold tomorrow morning nor starting off on Thursday morning but then we have another front moving on through here that's going to get us down close to freezing and some of that I think is dependent upon some of the, the clouds left over and then we warm up with the uh, humidity it comes back in over the weekend and then it's going to be dropping back down so here's the low clouds that decided to move on in here but as you can see in portions of the hill country there's the the tail end of those clouds and as those continue to kind of like I said clear on out then temperatures will be dropping down so right around sunrise or so early morning just before the sun starts to heat things up we may start to um, drop down even more so and despite that I'm still going for about 37 here in town for a low temperature a lot of snow up there to the uh, Pacific Northwest and up in the uh, higher elevations of the Rockies, but all that is pretty much moving almost straight west to east, and that's because the upper level steering winds are moving straight west to east is sort of a zonal pattern that we are getting into. Now we will get a little bit of a northwesterly flow that's going to pull another front through here late Wednesday into Thursday, then the cooler air kind of always kind of trails behind there, the coldest air, I should say. And so that's why we're going to get down to close to freezing by Friday morning. Then we go into the weekend and notice how those uh, upper level wind lines kind of lift up there again. We get into more of a southwesterly flow. We have a lot more clouds around here over the weekend. Then yet another front, although it, it will come through Sunday into Monday, but it's not like the one that moved through over the weekend that had these upper level wind lines coming straight down out of Canada. Not the situation this time around. So yes, it will knock temperatures back down, but it's not going to be one of these big cold Arctic blasts like we had over the weekend. So 58 degrees today at noon, mostly sunny skies and then a high temperature today makes it all the way up to 65. Tomorrow we aren't going to be as chilly in the morning and then we get up into the uh, about low to mid 70s. 62 then on Thursday we get that front moving on through here and that's going to knock temperatures down. Not brutally cold, but we will be down close to freezing once again by Friday morning and then bounce right back over the weekend and then sort of get things trimmed off a little bit by the first of next week. Looking forward to the nice weekend, though. Maybe a sprinkle or two. Okay. I wouldn't count on it. I think it's kind of being a little too wishful thinking. All so. right. Maybe later for that. Hopefully. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. 522, about 40 degrees. And still ahead in your morning spotlight, we're going to tell you how much David Bowie's song catalog just sold for, plus the weekend announcing a new album. Here are your lottery numbers, including an update on the numbers from last night. Powerball jackpot's now up to $575 million. Big three numbers, 315, Fireball 9. Your daily four numbers, 4609, Fireball 2. Cash 5, 1, 2, 6, 23, 31. Texas 2-step, 2, 21, 29, 33. Bonus ball 21. Speaking of Powerball, here are your numbers. 2, 13, 32, 33, 48. Powerball 22, Power Play 2. Some new music on the way from the weekend, plus another TV show host has COVID. Here's CNN's David Daniel with today's Hollywood Minute. David Bowie's estate has sold the publishing rights to the legendary singer's catalog to Warner Chappelle. Variety puts the value of the deal at more than a quarter billion dollars. It covers every song Bowie ever wrote, including those on the posthumous album Toy, which comes out Friday. Bowie would have turned 75 on Saturday. The Weeknd is also putting out new music on Friday, his long-teased album, Dawn FM. 
The artist revealed the release date and a snippet of music in this announcement trailer. You've been in the dark for way too long. It's time to walk into the light and accept your fate with open arms. They must represent all of us. Whoopi Goldberg now represents a growing group, celebs who've tested positive for COVID-19. Her co-host on The View, Joy Behar, made the announcement on Monday's episode, saying since she's vaxxed and boosted, her symptoms have been very, very mild, but we're being super cautious. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. And time now, it's 527 and about 40 degrees out there. Still ahead on GMSA with the latest on Elizabeth Holmes, founder of failed biotech startup Theranos, who's been found guilty on fraud and conspiracy charges. Plus, the price of your hot and ready pizza from Little Caesars will no longer be just $5. We're going to tell you how much it's going up. Plus, why some firearms dealers will soon be required to make secure gun storage devices available for purchase. Making headlines this morning, what's next for former Theranos CEO Elizabeth Holmes now that she's been found guilty on fraud and conspiracy charges? The COVID-19 risk level has now been raised to severe with thousands of new positive case numbers. I'm Sarah Acosta coming up on GMSA, what the city is urging its residents. And taking a look outside with a live cam, we're starting our day at 40 degrees this morning. And if you have to head off to school or work, you still need a jacket even though we're not in the 20s. Good morning to you. It is Tuesday, January 4th. Thanks for joining us. Hope you had a good Monday back at work if you returned yesterday. And if you're returning today, hey, good luck. It's still cold out there. We're expecting a few more cars on the roads today. We're going to check on Transcat in one moment. First up, Mike Ostrange with the latest. You said we did have a blanket last night. Yeah, but that blanket is slowly being kind of pulled off the area. A lot of clear skies are being reported. We still have uh, partly cloudy skies over there at the airport. That blanket of clouds acted just like a regular blanket. And that's why we didn't get quite as cold as where we were yesterday because yesterday we were down in the upper flirting with mid 20s. Same thing on Sunday morning. So that very dry out there, dry air out there and light wind. But of course it is those uh, that little little bit of cloudiness out there, which was helping to hold temperatures up. But as you can see, these clouds are moving out of here very, very quickly. And as that clouds clear on out temperatures that will allow the heat to radiate out into space. So uh, I think we're still going to be dropping into the uh, mid 30s, clear out a little bit quicker and and uh, could get even lower than that. Right now, we've got 20s uh, out there in the hill country for wind chill, 38 here in town, 39 in Canyon Lake. So, yeah, it's definitely still cold out there. No getting around that. Mountain Cedar still on the high side, and mold is also on the high side. The updated count is going to be coming out in about a couple of hours or so. 58 at noon, 65 for a high temperature. Good looking day. Slight bit of a breeze out of the uh, southwest, but plenty of sunshine out there. So, jacket this morning, maybe not by this afternoon. We get even warmer tomorrow, then we have another front, then we'll warm up, then we have another front. So we're getting back into that nice cycle with the fronts every uh, couple of days. Details on that and a look ahead to the weekend in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority and Stephen Cavazos is off today, so just looking around town again. So far, so good. Everything 281 Hildebrand, 10 at Medical, and also one more stop around town, 37 Jones. No problems out there. Make sure you do drive carefully this morning. Thank you, Mike. San Antonio Metropolitan Health District raising Bear County's COVID-19 risk level to severe. This comes because of an increase in stress of local hospitals. But right now we're going to go ahead and go to the search for Lena Kill that continues. And it's now stretching into its third week. Lena was last seen on December 20th at a playground at her apartment complex on Fredericksburg Road. Police re-released several of Lena's pictures. They're looking for new leads in the case. Anyone who has information that leads to finding her can get $150,000. If you know anything, call the San Antonio Police Department's Missing Persons Unit. That number is 210-207-7660. Elizabeth Holmes, the former founder and CEO of failed biotech startup Theranos, went from being hailed as the next Steve Jobs to being found guilty of four of 11 federal fraud and conspiracy charges. CNN's Britt Conway has the latest on the case and a look ahead to what comes next. So this is the little tubes that we collect the, the samples in. We call them the nanotainer. 
With just a few drops of blood, a groundbreaking machine can do a wide range of blood tests. At least that's what failed blood test startup Theranos promised. Founder and CEO Elizabeth Holmes attracted hundreds of millions of dollars in funding, a board of well-known political figures, and key retail partners. But allegations surfaced that she knowingly misled investors, doctors, and patients. Now she faces prison time and hefty fines after being found guilty of four of 11 federal fraud charges. Conspiracy to commit wire fraud against Theranos investors, guilty. Three wire fraud charges from 2014, totaling more than $144 million, all guilty. She was found not guilty, though, on four other fraud charges, including the ones related to patient fraud. But the jury was deadlocked on three of the charges concerning defrauding investors. One jury consultant says juries often begin with a predetermined verdict in mind, but he says it's clear that didn't happen here. They really focused on the law and the fact that they asked for the law several weeks ago to bring home with them is very telling. They treated each of these counts very distinctly. And then for the remaining three, they decided to tell the judge that they were deadlocked. But the judge is expected to declare a mistrial on those charges. When the former Silicon Valley entrepreneur will be sentenced hasn't been decided yet. I'm Britt Conway reporting. Back here at home, San Antonio Metro Health raising Bear County's COVID-19 risk level to severe. This comes because of an increase in stress on the local hospital system, a rise in daily cases over the last two weeks, as well as a more than 27% positivity rate. Sarah Custis staying on top of developments joins us live. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Mark and Steph. And Metro Health says the Omicron variant most likely accounts for 90 to 100 percent of these new cases. But let's take a look at the numbers. The seven day average in Bear County, a little more than 2000 cases last week. The state showed a little more than 950 50 cases, and that's leading to more people in the hospital for treatment. 506 people are hospitalized with COVID-19 up more than 50 over what the state was reporting just Sunday. There's still several opportunities, however, to get the vaccine. The Wonderland of America's Mall has a free clinic every day this week through Friday. It opens at 10 a.m. and closes at 6 p.m. Now back out here live, we're at the Bear County Sheriff's Office and the Adult Detention Center. They're going to be hosting a free vaccine clinic as well. It kicks off at 630 this morning. They're going to have the Pfizer vaccine and they're also been giving the Pfizer booster shot. If you do want your booster shot, you have to bring your vaccination card and no appointments are required. Live from downtown, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Steph. Thank you, Sarah. Well, in about face, AT&T and Verizon have agreed to postpone their planned rollouts of 5G infrastructure near airports. Both carriers say they will hold off on activating 5G services near airports until January 19th. Comes amid feared widespread disruptions to air travel and shipping. In December, the Federal Aviation Administration warned that it planned to ban pilots from using a key aircraft instrument over concerns that 5G signals could interfere with the devices. The decision the agency said would likely lead to widespread flight delays and diversions. Some firearms dealers will soon be required to make secure gun storage devices available for purchase. The Department of Justice has just issued the new rule for gun dealers with federal licenses. Devices include gun safes, gun cases, and lock boxes that are compatible with the firearms being sold. The devices also must be designed to be unlocked by a key, combination, or similar means. The move is meant to help reduce the number of people killed and injured by misuse of firearms. The new regulation goes into effect on February 3rd. Someone still has a chance to become the first Powerball jackpot winner of 2022. The live jackpot has jumped to $575 million after no one won last night strong. According to Texas Lottery, one person in Austin did win the consolation prize of a million dollars by matching five out of five numbers without the Powerball. Next strong comes tomorrow night. No one has won the jackpot in almost three months. Powerball does admit the overall odds of winning the top prize are one in 292 million. Powerball is played in 45 states along with Washington, D.C., Puerto Rico, and the U.S. Virgin Islands. Time now, 538 and 40 degrees for now. So ahead, we'll tell you about the new vaccine mandate deadline just put into place for Starbucks workers. Also next, the U.S. economy is starting off on a good note for 2022. However, we are taking a look at five factors that could cause a slowdown this year. 
Outside with live cam waking up on a Tuesday morning, the first of 2022. Glad you're with us right here on Good Morning San Antonio as you're getting your day going and the kids up for school. The U.S. economy starting off the new year with serious momentum. Average weekly jobless claims are near the lowest level in 52 years. And the unemployment rate is down to 4%. However, as CNN's Jen Sullivan reports, five risk factors could quickly change all that. Heading into 2022, the economy is booming. But economists warn several risks this year can change all that, starting with COVID. It's going to do damage. It already has started to do that. You could see that with the cancellation of air flights. Uh, restaurant bookings are down. Credit card spending on travel is off. Then there's the risk of inflation staying hot. While some economists predict inflation will cool off later in the year, prices for food, gas and housing are still high. The third risk, supply chain staying scrambled. The Delta variant impacted supply chains in several ways, including getting workers sick. And while it's still early, economists predict the same could happen with Omicron. We see various goods still quite difficult to get. So I remain worried about those problems, even if they weren't quite as bad as we were worried about, you know, a few weeks ago. Then there's the potential for a Fed policy mistake. The Federal Reserve is ending its emergency support for the economy and plans to raise interest rates. One economist says Omicron could destabilize the economy and force the Fed to delay that. The Fed may delay when it actually begins to start raising interest rates, which right now feels like it's going to be sometime May or June of 2022, but they could delay it. Also on that note, after providing nearly $6 trillion the past two years, Uncle Sam is slowing support. Fiscal stimulus and spending are expected to slow dramatically in 2022. And finally, the unexpected, the risk of a surprise event that could impact the economy. For today's Consumer Watch, I'm Jen Sullivan. And time now, 543 and about 40 degrees out there. Up next, we'll tell you how much more you'll soon have to pay for your hot and ready pizza from Little Caesars. And welcome back. It's 546 in your morning consumer headlines. All Starbucks employees in the U.S. have a little over a month to get vaccinated against COVID-19. That's according to a message the company sent to employees. Workers who do not get vaccinated by February 9th would have to submit to regular testing and they would have to pay for it themselves and it cannot be taken at home. Starbucks is one of the first large restaurant chains mandating employee vaccinations. The mandate is meant to comply with the Biden administration's requirement that all businesses with more than 100 employees require workers to get vaccinated or receive weekly testing. The third largest pizza chain in the U.S. raising the price on one of its most popular deals. Little Caesar says a signature $5 hot ready pizza will now costs $5.55, an increase of 11%. However, the restaurant said the hot and ready will be better than ever. The new version will be topped with 33% more pepperoni. Little Caesar says the new price is a permanent change and it's the deal's first price increase in nearly 25 years. Yeah, it has been a while. <laughs> It'll be a little change. And time right now, 547, the last check at the roads. Things were looking pretty okay. We'll look back again. Everything's moving along, and I looked at all the uh, Transit Guide cameras around town. Everything is just, uh, you know, traffic's picking up a little bit here and there. Obviously, once we uh, get further into the morning commute, everything's going to be a lot more cars out there. But uh, right now, looking pretty good. You know, back to that, the pizza, yeah. mm -hmm. raising prices, at least you get more. So, you know, a little more pepperoni. That's right. <laughs> and I don't, does anybody hate pepperoni? I don't, well... Not, not in this room. I've never met. I mean, I know <laughs> anchovies. You know, I know people right. are screaming at the screen right now. Anchovies. We hate anchovies. Usually, that's a safe one mm -hmm. to go with. With pepperoni. Double, double cheese and pepperoni. Mm, that that sounds great. really good. Well, it did. Never mind. Long story. Anyway. Oh. <laughs> thank you, Mike. Do what? Nothing. Okay. <laughs> cold pizza for best cold pizza for breakfast. What is it? Domino's was always good mm, back in college. For that, I, was way I like Pizza Hut. That's good too. Yeah. But yeah, cold pizza for breakfast. Anyway, uh, great picture there with the crescent moon. It is going to be full on the 17th. What a fantastic shot with the uh, all the trees, no leaves on the foreground there. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. So the clouds that uh, kind of slid in here overnight and help keep temperatures from getting as cold as what we, as we expected. Temperatures to dip down right around freezing this morning.
that doesn't look like it's going to be the case here in town. Yesterday, we did get up to 56 and yeah, mid 50s was pretty common. Still about six, seven, eight degrees below the normal high temperature. But today we are going to be at or actually a little bit above normal, getting up into the uh, mid 60s around here. Still a really, really pleasant day. Lots of sunshine, low humidity. You can probably eh, lose a jacket, but once the sun starts to think about going down tonight, it is going to cool off quickly. So I wouldn't uh, forget about the jacket if you're going to be out this afternoon going into this evening. Here's a satellite picture and here's the uh, clouds. But again, they are clearing out very quickly this morning. So once those clouds get on out of here, temperatures will be dropping down a few more degrees. We still have some of those clouds off to the east, but a lot of clear skies obviously are being reported out in portions of the uh, hill country. Big picture of things. Notice how just kind of step back and look with, well, obviously a lot of snow up there in the higher elevations, but all of this is moving just about straight west to east. And so when you have that type of pattern, despite the fact that you've got 15 degrees up or 15 below, pardon me, in Cut Bank, Montana, single digits in the uh, northern states up there along the U.S. Canadian border, uh, that is not really dropping down here. So we are actually going to be warming up a little bit in the next couple of days and then another front moves on through here, but it's not going to be quite the front that we had over the weekend. Here's the gee whiz this morning. 43 degrees below zero is the wind chill temperature at Cutbank, Montana. Just kind of let that soak in for me. Can you imagine I'd, what that would be like? 43 below zero. Ouch. You're so growing up in Michigan, you never experienced anything quite that cold? No. No. When I live in Green Bay, Wisconsin. The coldest uh, morning air temperature was actually, I think it was about 20 below zero. And how would you describe that for people who've never experienced yes, that? Like it, it never got, a, it just, I mean, yeah, it was beyond describing. So, but it never got above zero the next day, the most beautiful sky you've ever seen. Mm. But you breathe in, your nostrils just cinch up and close up. So, <laughs> anyway, here's what the upper level winds are looking like right now. And like I said, everything's moving just about straight west to east. And that's because the upper level winds are moving in that direction. We're not going to be seeing anything coming straight down out of Canada like we did over the weekend. We get this little bit of a northwesterly flow. That's going to pull a front through here, sort of keep temperatures in check because warmer today than yesterday, warmer tomorrow. Then we get uh, kind of temperature shaved off a little bit. And then we're going to warm back up again as we go in toward the weekend and another little front's going to be moving on through here by late in the weekend, first part of next week, and that's going to shave temperatures off once again. So, yes, we will be doing a bit of a roller coaster, but nothing like what we had last week. 58 degrees today at noon, mostly sunny skies. We are going to make it up to 65 for a high temperature today. Good looking day. Get out and enjoy it. Open up the windows. 45 starting off tomorrow. So still jacket weather all week long in the morning. Not not in the afternoon today, nor tomorrow. Thursday, maybe after that front moves through here. Close to freezing again on Friday. I think we keep a fair amount of clouds around, though, and low 60s. But then we're going to be right back up into the 70s by the weekend and then knock those temperatures out by first of next week. Not too bad. Mm -hmm. Very pleasant. Appropriate for January for the most part. Yes, indeed. Averaging close to normal readings. That being about 63 right now. I can't remember the coldest I ever experienced living on the East Coast or in the Midwest as a kid. Mm -hmm. What's the coldest you can ever recall? Was it February's <laughs> the ice winter storm? storm? The winter storm. It was it 17 degrees? <laughs> yeah. yeah. The funny thing when it was that cold, yeah. I had been out of town for a couple of days. My car was parked at the airport uh -huh. and, was, and cranking your car over and it goes, Oh my yeah. goodness. It's a and whole just different kind of misery. Grind started, but. Yeah, I was lucky. You got, yeah, you got very lucky. 552, about 40 degrees on your Tuesday. And Ben Affleck's latest starring role is in a film directed by George Clooney. We're going to have a special first look next. Here are your lottery numbers this morning. Pick three, three, one, five, fireball nine, daily four, four, six, zero, nine, fireball two. Cash five, one, two, six, 23, 31. Your Texas two step two, 21, 29, 33, bonus ball 21. And your Powerball numbers, 2, 13, 32, 33, 48, Powerball 22, Power Play 2. It's $575 million. Yeah, cut. nobody won the big one last night, so that's the drawing for tomorrow night. Wow. We'll be right back. Good Tuesday morning. Coming up here on GMA, we'll start with the fight against COVID. The U.S. setting a global record with more than a million new COVID cases in 24 hours. Millions of Americans going back to school and work after the holidays. So what does it all mean? We're going to have the latest right here on GMA. 
Hey, whose kid is that? My sister. Which sister? Is that hot one or the crazy one? What, are you gonna die? <laughs> ben Affleck portrays an uncle and surrogate father in The Tender Bar, based on a true story. And I'm gonna always tell you the truth. Your father is dead beat. I'll take care of you. Teach you the male sciences. The film is George Clooney's latest behind the camera. In my career, I, there's two things that are really important to me. So I work with good people, people I respect as people, treat other people with kindness and also, you know, whatever their process is, like if you feel like they have your best interest at heart, they want the movie to be good, I'll do anything for you, you know, and, and that's how George makes you feel like he gets it, he wants you to be good. I like to read. You read enough of those, maybe you could become a writer. Clooney took a chance on Affleck's young co-star, who makes his acting debut based on a viral video. So what happened was my mom recorded a video of me cursing about the lockdown, and it wasn't staged. Jimmy Kimmel saw it, and he wanted me on his show. So I went on his show, and right after we got done with the interview, this casting director named Rachel Tenner wanted, said, called my mom and said that George wanted me in his next movie. It's funny because was... usually being on Kimmel means it's the end of your career. You know what I mean? First, right? <laughs> in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Well, ahead the next hour, GMSA technology plays a big role in our lives just about every day. So what kind of tech trends can we expect in 2022? We will have that story. And TransSky traffic is starting to build now. It's taken most of the morning so far, but really starting to pick up. We're looking live at 281 in Hildebrand. I-10 at Medical. The GMSA team is keeping an eye on the roads for you all morning long. We'll be right back with your top stories coming up. Vaccine rates for children in Texas remain low. This as COVID-19 cases surge. I'm Sarah Costa coming up on GMSA. What parents need to know as their children head back to school. Former Theranos CEO Elizabeth Holmes has been convicted of duping investors and now faces years of prison time. Details ahead. And taking a look outside with live cam, the temperatures look a little better than they did yesterday morning. We are not in the 20s anymore, but it is still chilly out there. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is Tuesday, January 4th. Thanks for joining us. I think a lot of you guys are starting school today or starting work. Maybe you had an extra day off yesterday. Uh, it's still cold out there. Yeah, Mike says whether you knew it or not, we were all sharing one big blanket last night. Yeah, we had clouds that moved on top of us, and now they sort of sliding on out of here. And so temperatures have been slowly dropping down as that blanket uh, kind of gets pulled off. And still chilly out there, even though it's nowhere near as cold as the past couple of mornings. It's still uh, pretty chilly. And there's that blanket of clouds. And as you can see, it's continuing to work its way on out. It looks like it's it's uh, just about covering the eastern half of Bear County and then sliding off to the east. So a lot of clear skies out there in portions of the hill country. And as you can see, as the cloud cover moves on out, we're starting to see a few more freezing temperatures. Rio Medina, Helotus, uh, 33 comfort. So in your backyard, obviously, it may be freezing. 34 up the road in Valverde, and we're down to 39 right now. So I think we do drop down another couple of degrees or so before it's all said and done here in town. Mountain Cedar and Mold are both on the high side. Mountain Cedar did go down from the previous day's reading. Of course, the updated count is going to be coming out in just about, I'll uh, we'll say, hour, hour and a half. 37 this morning, right around 7 o'clock, and then nice big warm up throughout the morning hours. So we still have very dry air in place. So once that sun comes up, we warm up very quickly. We gain about uh, 20 degrees by noon, up to 58. And then we are going to be topping off later on this afternoon, right around mid 60s. So we will be almost 10 degrees warmer than what we were yesterday for a high temperature. Add just about another 10 to that for tomorrow. And so we're going to be getting up into the uh, 70s. It's not going to that trend won't continue. Another front comes on through here. Big question is got any rain in sight? Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Stevens off this morning and just taking a look around town right now at uh, some of the uh, highways still very, very empty out there. 281 at Hildebrand also Right around, so where is that? That's at, 281. Um, that, at, there we go. They removed the weather back. Ah, thank you very much. Yeah. 37 at Military, uh, 10 UTSA Boulevard. Everything's moving along very smoothly. Keep up the good work throughout the rest of the morning commute, folks. Thank you, Mike. San Antonio students are headed back to class as the city raises its COVID risk level to severe. This as the vaccine rates in Texas for children are low. Sarah Costa joins us live with what parents need to know. Good morning, Sarah. 
Good morning, Mark and Steph. And one of the largest school districts, NISD, started back yesterday. And get this, more than 1,200 of their staff members called out sick. Now, these weren't all COVID-19 related, but it did require 926 substitute teachers to jump in. But let's go ahead and look at these low vaccine rates. According to new data from the Mayo Clinic, 10.6% of kids 5 to 11 in Texas are fully vaccinated. That percentage goes up to 52% for 12 to 17 year olds. Local doctors hope the number of kids getting vaccinated goes up amid this surge of COVID-19 cases. And boosters are also extremely important when it comes to the Omicron variant. For kids too young to get the shot, masks are key to staying healthy. Like a KN95 or an N95 mask, or at the very least, a surgical mask, a plain old face cloth covering, it's just not going to cut it. Now, as it stands now, Moderna and Johnson & Johnson limit vaccine shots to those 18 and older. Pfizer's first two shots are approved for children as young as five, and the CDC did approve that Pfizer booster yesterday for children ages 15, excuse me, for ages 12 to 15. There's still several opportunities to get vaccinated for adults and children. The Wonderland of America's mall has a free clinic every day this week through Friday. It's from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Now back out, back, out, back out here live, we are at the Bear County Sheriff's Office and Adult Detention Center right in front of the steps on Comal Street. Now starting in just about 30 minutes, they're going to open up its free vaccine clinic. You don't need an appointment. They're going to be giving out the Pfizer vaccine and, uh, and the Pfizer booster shots. Now if you want your booster shot, you are required to bring your vaccine card. Again, this is for anyone ages five and up for the Pfizer vaccine and we'll be showing it live as they open up at 630 live from downtown. I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Steph. Thank you, Sarah. And just like Sarah was talking about earlier, we are seeing a surge in coronavirus cases here in Bear County, which is leading to more hospitalizations. Currently, 506 people are in our hospitals. 22 of them are children. There is already a need for more help in the healthcare field. The Department of State Health Services is sending out of state nurses to San Antonio and other surrounding uh, counties to help out with the latest surge in cases. A little more than 400 nurses and some respiratory therapists are expected. This will be the fourth time since the pandemic began that the state has used contract nurses from out of state. There is still a great need for blood here at home, especially type O. South Texas Blood and Tissue Center says there's a blood drive happening tomorrow at Andretti Carding and Games. That's on 1604 near I-10. be happening from 3 to 7 p.m. tomorrow. Donors can get a free pint of ice cream and a long sleeve t-shirt and make an appointment at SouthTexasBlood.org. Crime Stoppers is sharing some video hoping it will help them find suspects in a stabbing. Police say a party ended with one person stabbed several times. Part of the chaos was caught on cell phone video. We want to warn you some may find this disturbing. Police say the party happened December 5th in an apartment at the reserve in San Antonio. Some people apparently showed up without an invitation. Officers say several men and women attacked a person who tried to kick those people out. So far, two people in the video have been arrested, but police need your help identifying the others involved. Crime Stoppers looking for the person suspected of robbing a Southside convenience store. This happened back on November 14th at the Stop on Shop on East Formosa near South Flores Street. That's where investigators say the person on your screen approached the cashier, displayed a weapon, and then demanded cash from the register. If you have any information about either of the cases we just mentioned, you're asked to call the number on your screen, 210-224-STOP. In your morning headlines, former Theranos CEO Elizabeth Holmes has been convicted of duping investors into believing her startup had developed a revolutionary medical device that could detect a multitude of diseases and conditions from only a few drops of blood. A jury convicted the 37-year-old on two counts of wire fraud and two counts of conspiracy to commit fraud after seven days of deliberations. The verdict followed a three-month trial featuring dozens of witnesses, including Holmes herself. She now faces up to 20 years in prison for each count 
although legal experts say she is unlikely to receive the maximum sentence. Three people are dead, a fourth seriously injured after an SUV collided with a snowplow in a suburb of Washington, D.C. Two women and a man were pronounced dead at the scene last night. Here's aerial footage. The man was freed from the SUV and taken to a hospital with critical injuries. The Department of Transportation says the plow was a contractor for Maryland State Highway Administration. There's no word yet on what caused this crash near Burtonsville, Maryland, but it appears the SUV hit the rear of the plow. More than seven inches of snow or more was reported in part of the D.C. metro area after the season's first winter storm rolled through in the last 24 to 36 hours. To Colorado now, investigators looking for the cause of a wildfire that destroyed nearly 1,000 homes and buildings have narrowed those search to a sparsely populated neighborhood near Boulder. Authorities say it's the same area where a passerby captured video of a burning shed on the day of the fire began. Boulder County sheriffs, it could be weeks before authorities release details on the investigation. Experts from the FBI, ATF, and the U.S. Forest Service are all helping. Meanwhile, the search continues for two people who are still missing and survivors are sorting through the charred remnants of their homes and belongings. Majority Leader Chuck Schumer says the Senate will vote soon on changing filibuster rules in an effort to advance stalled voting rights legislation. Pointing to the January 6th attack on the Capitol, the New York Democrat says the rule changes are needed to protect the nation's democracy. Right now, Democrats are trying to overcome the 60 vote threshold needed to stop a Republican filibuster that's blocking their election law package. Schumer says the Senate will debate and consider the rule changes on or before January 17th. On this January 4th, 609, about 39 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, we are hearing from former Spurs coach Becky Hammond about her new head coaching gig in Las Vegas. That's the end of an era in the tech world. Just ahead, we'll take a look at the history of the BlackBerry device. And a quick look outside with live cam. 39 degrees, actually dropped a degree here in the last hour. Uh, still chilly out there today, but we will warm up to the 60s. We'll be right back. Now to the end of an era in the world of technology. And while BlackBerry fans knew this day was coming, for many of them, it's still a bitter pill to swallow. Here's ABC's Will Gans with more. Bye-bye, BlackBerry. The new BlackBerry Z10. As of today, BlackBerry devices running on the company's legacy operating systems and software will no longer work, going the way of floppy disks and Game Boys and DVD players, joining the graveyard of tech gone too soon. BlackBerry devices using the BlackBerry 7.1 operating system and earlier BlackBerry 10 software won't function anymore for data, text messaging, and phone calls, including to 911. The change going into effect today, January 4th. The end-of-life move has been a long time coming, the last version of BlackBerry's operating systems launching in 2013. But for many, it's the end of an era. In the late 2000s, the BlackBerry making it possible to bring your work home with you, thanks to that infamous keyboard. It helps me keep track of both my business and also um, uh, arranging who's going to pick up the children for which volleyball practice. At its peak in 2012, BlackBerry had more than 80 million active users. For a long time, BlackBerry's a favorite accessory of politicians, from former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton to former President Barack Obama, who loved his BlackBerry so much, his team made him a secure version following his 2008 election. Writing in his memoir, quote, My team did throw me one bone when it came to freedom. I was able to keep my BlackBerry. Celebrities loved the BlackBerry, too. Gaga's early selfies coming compliments of the BlackBerry. But no more. BlackBerry saying in a statement, we thank our many loyal customers and partners over the years. Will Gans, ABC News, New York. 6.15 on your Tuesday morning. Let's go ahead and look back outside with TransGuide. Uh, things were okay earlier, but now I think we see maybe a stalled vehicle. Um, in that one shot, yeah, we yes. couldn't see which one it was. Our our, our crawl was uh, in the way. The, in the way, but uh, we'll circle back to it here in just a second. Right now, so far so good. Uh, cross your fingers that we stay fairly incident free this morning. Traffic has been relatively light, but has picked up in the last hour or so. Agreed, Mike? Yes, indeed, obviously. And uh, obviously, there's going to be a lot more traffic than there has been in the past couple of weeks with a lot of kids getting back to school and everything. So, yes, sir. The jacket at the bus stop for sure. Mm, oh yeah, even though it's not as cold as what it 
it has been. It's still pretty darn chilly out there, and pretty much every day this week, every morning this week, you will need a jacket, and depending on the day, whether you can take it off by the afternoon. So 37 degrees, we are going to continue to drop down a few more degrees in the next uh, couple of hours, and we've had a blanket on top of us, blanket of clouds, and so that's what helped to keep temperatures up a little bit, or I I don't know if you can say not as or warmer than yesterday. Technically, yes, but still cold out there. 65 for a high temperature later on this afternoon. Beautiful, beautiful picture. I love this. We had all these clear skies, that dry air out there. And, oh, that just means gorgeous afternoon. It's going to be another beautiful one today as well. And we should have a pretty good-looking sunrise. We did, like I said, have that cloud cover on top of us, but that's continuing to work its way on out of here. So there will still be some clouds off to the east, but a lot more in the way of clear skies off to the west. Okay, we always talk about normal temperatures, the 30-year average temperature. And right now we are still in the historically coolest time, coldest time of the year with the normal high 63, normal low 41, and that extends all the way through the 20th of the month. Then we go into the 1st of February, and this is when I say for the rest of winter, meteorological winter, which is December, uh, January, February, obviously, as far as the, uh, the equinox, that's not until March. 1st of February, 65, 43, so we go up a couple of degrees every roughly couple of weeks going in toward Valentine's Day. Here's your early alert, boys. Remember, Valentine's Day, the 14th, just getting it out there right now. And then by the end of February, uh, notice how it jumps up three degrees on each end of the scale in a couple of weeks. So where it's kind of a slow increase in temperatures, then it starts to increase a little bit quicker as we get in toward March and April temperatures will go up about uh, three degrees or so every couple of weeks as far as the average is. Now, wind, we've got a little bit of a breeze out there, so there's a slight wind chill. Feels like 28 Kerrville, 35 here in town, and uh, 31 right now in Lotus. And as far as the humidity, it is very, very low. That's why we're going to have a beautiful day. That's why temperatures, one of the reasons why temperatures have been cooling down so nicely and then warming up so nicely in the afternoon. We will see a slight increase in the humidity, but it's not as though temperatures or dew point temperatures are going to be just skyrocketing. We will stay kind of humidity is going to be kind of held in check for the next couple of days. So yes, it will be higher. It won't be as cold in the morning, but it's not just going to be ridiculously humid at all. So that's some good news. 58 degrees today at noon, mostly sunny skies and then a high temperature today up to 65. So a um, degree or so above normal. Good looking day tomorrow. It's not going to be as cold in the morning. Still jacket weather right around the uh, mid 40s and we get up into the 70s. Then just when it's starting to warm up, a front moves through here. Not as potent as the one last weekend. We will, though, get down to freezing by Friday morning. And then the weekend warms back up. Then another front moves on through here. And of course, don't forget Thursday mm -hmm. is Three Kings Day, the epiphany. Yes, it is. And uh, Friday, even though the freeze will warm up a little bit in the afternoon. Yeah, yeah, we'll still warm up a good, you know, almost 30 degrees. So still got some fairly dry air out there. More humidity this weekend mm. and a sprinkle or shower, two. Maybe. maybe, maybe kind maybe. of sort of. Yeah, we'll Thank hope you. for it. Thank you, Mike. Just about 620, 39 degrees at last check. And the holidays continue for many American travelers who are unable to return home from their vacation after testing positive for COVID-19. That's ahead in your GMA First Look. Why hide your skin? If Dupixent has your moderate to severe eczema or atopic dermatitis under control. Hide my skin? Not me. By hitting eczema where it counts, Dupixent helps heal your skin from within, keeping you one step ahead of eczema. Hide my skin? Not me. And that means long-lasting, clearer skin and fast itch relief for adults. With Dupixent, you can show more skin with less eczema. Hide my skin? Not me. Don't use if you're allergic to Dupixent. Serious allergic reactions can occur, including anaphylaxis, which is severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems, such as eye pain or vision changes or a parasitic infection. If you take asthma medicines, don't change or stop them without talking to your doctor. When you help heal your skin from within, you can change how your skin looks and feels. And that's the kind of change you notice. Talk to your eczema specialist about Dupixent, a breakthrough eczema treatment.
And this morning's GMA First Look, COVID positive and stuck in paradise. We came to uh, Belize for our holiday season with my uh, wife and daughter. We flew down on uh, December 24th and we're planning on going back on uh, December 31st. Cameron Wilson from Brooklyn is stuck in Belize. Despite being vaccinated and boosted, he and his wife tested positive before their flight back home. Now he's stuck in a hotel room specifically for people with COVID. With the situation with the COVID as it is now, I think I would be hesitant to recommend that anyone leave the country. I know people will. And we'll have more of their story coming up at 7 a.m., plus a closer look at the thousands of flight cancellations right here at home. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. Well, as you know by now, Becky Hammond getting her shot as a head coach. And while it's not the NBA yet, it's with her old team, the San Antonio Stars, moved to Las Vegas to become the Aces. Even though we knew about the move last week, the official announcement came yesterday. Hammond agreed to a five-year contract with Las Vegas following her 16-year playing career that included eight years with the New York Liberty beginning in 1999. After eight seasons on the Spurs bench, she is making the move. Here's what Becky had to say when she got the call from team president Nikki Fargus. When she first called, I had no intentions of leaving the NBA at this point, um, you know, and after talking to her and, and wrestling and throwing around different ideas and stuff, um, obviously I, I came to the conclusion that uh, this was the best spot for me and my family and an opportunity for me to, uh, you know, sit in the big chair and, and, and be a head coach of, of a major professional sports league. And so um, I feel like I'm ready to have my own team. Um, and this is the organization that made it very, very obvious. They wanted me really, really bad. Hammond was interviewed for several NBA head coaching vacancies, most recent with the Portland Trailblazers. But that job was eventually given to NBA veteran Chauncey Billups. Meanwhile, our Spurs back in action tonight. They're on the road taking the Raptors in Toronto. That game set for 6 o'clock our time. Silver and Black will then swing by Boston tomorrow to take on the Celtics. Then to play Sixers Friday and the Brooklyn Nets on Sunday. On a completely separate note, we want to make a quick correction to a story we ran a little earlier this morning. We told you a blood drive was happening tomorrow at Andretti. Carding and games over on 1604 at I-10 near the rim. That blood drive is actually happening today from 3 to 7 p.m. And time now, 625 and about 39 degrees out there. So ahead in our next half hour of GMSA, we're going to have more on the long-awaited verdict in the trial of former tech billionaire Elizabeth Holmes. And two people sent to the hospital after a crash on the north side. We'll tell you everything we know so far. COVID-19 cases continue to surge here in Bear County. It's why the Bear County Sheriff's Office is hosting a free, no appointment needed vaccine clinic kicking off this morning. I'm Sarah Costa coming up on GMSA. How you can come out. If you're just now waking up, it's not quite as cold as it has been the last couple of mornings, but still plenty chilly out there as we take a live look near the airport. Mike is standing by with an update to your forecast. Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday the 4th. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Hope you're having a good week so far. It's early in the week and I know the, the cold weather has been kind of nice, you know, especially when, when the sun's out. Uh, sometimes I try to like get my run in early to avoid the hot weather, but I don't have to worry about it this week. We I mean, can go at any time of the day. Yep. Which is nice. And the, the other thing, though, too, is in the morning, like yesterday, you know, the sun was out, but boy, you get in the shadows and yeah. it's like, ooh, it's now it's, it's, still it's still pretty nippy out there, but it is going to get warmer later on this afternoon and uh, still no uh, no sign of the uh, the sunrise. Or is there a little bit of a glow out there? Can't really tell yet, but we did have some clouds that slid in here overnight and that did help to keep temperatures from getting anywhere near as cold as yesterday. Uh, so we're uh, yesterday we bottomed out at 26. We're at 39 right now. 25 though is the dew points. It's still very dry air. A little bit of a breeze out there. And here's the uh, satellite picture, which showed those 
kind of low mid-level clouds that moved on through, but they're getting on out of here very quickly. So with the clearer skies, that will allow temperatures to maybe drop down a couple of more degrees. We are at 32 right now. Hello, this Rio Medina, 29, 32 in Uvalde. So it's funny as these clouds continue to clear out, these temperatures did drop down a little bit, but again, not anywhere near as cold as the past couple of mornings. Mountain cedar and mold are both on the high side and yeah, mostly sunny mid 60s today. Good looking day. Probably don't need a jacket later on this afternoon, but then by tomorrow morning, yes, once again, even though it won't be as cold, then it will get much warmer in the afternoon. We today about 10 degrees above yesterday's high temperature and then almost add another 10 to that tomorrow. But that won't continue to be the trend because we have another cold front moving through here Wednesday night into Thursday and that'll knock temperatures down and also get us down right around another freeze by Friday morning. That though won't last very long because the weekend we're going to have more clouds moving on in here. That may be a little too much of uh, kind of some wish wishful thinking. A, a sprinkle or two is going to be possible over the weekend, and it will definitely be warmer. But then that won't continue on because we'll have yet another front moving through here just in time for the start of next week. More on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. And as far as traffic is concerned, let's see. Been going along pretty well all morning long. 410 Parent Vital, not too bad out there. Obviously, it is picking up. Looks like uh, things are moving along though fairly well, so hopefully everything is a smooth commute this morning. Steph? Hopefully. Thank you, Mike. Right now, we're going to get to some late breaking news, though. San Antonio police are on the scene of a shooting. That scene unfolding just a short time ago in the 3000 block of Fredericksburg Road. Katrina Weber just arrived on scene. Katrina, what should, can you tell us about what's going on out there? Well, good morning. Uh, we found out that a man who's about 40 years old was shot uh, during what police believe may have been a robbery. Now, there are actually two scenes. We're actually in the 2700 block of Fredericksburg Road, but up the street, about three blocks up, is where police found the victim. Now, right behind me, that's the victim's truck, according to police. He told them that he was here washing his truck at this car wash when two men in a white SUV drove up, got out, and demanded his property, including that truck, the man says that he resisted a bit, and that's when he was shot in the leg by those uh, two robbers. They took off. The man, uh, the victim, also took off running down the street to a gas station, and that's where he called for help. That's where police initially went and found him and then later learned about this scene here. But they are going through that truck looking for any evidence. Uh, they have this area roped off, as you can see. They also had another area at that gas station three blocks down roped off where they were also processing, looking for any clues that they can find about whoever is responsible. Police say they were not able to get a good description of those robbers. They just know there were two men in a white SUV. Reporting live on the northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. The risk level for COVID has risen to severe as Bear County added thousands of new positive cases over the holiday. And that's why the Bear County Sheriff's Office and several other state and county agencies are hosting a free vaccine clinic this morning. Sarah Costa joins us live now. Sarah, how can people take advantage of this clinic? Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Well, they can start heading out now because it's just opening now at 630. This is a free clinic for vaccines. It's going to be the Pfizer vaccine ages 12 and up. Again, it's for the Pfizer vaccine. You can get your booster, but we just learned that they're also going to be doing testing for COVID-19 as well. I know testing very limited all across the country. Now I'm here with uh, Johnny Garcia with the sheriff's office. That testing element crucial for county residents as cases continue to surge. For sure, as you've seen, you know, the lines have been long in the community within the last couple of days. Uh, testing is scarce throughout the community. There's still options that are available. However, being that there's a surge, everybody's starting to come out wanting to get tested, which is a good thing. Uh, this morning, we'll have that capability here. You'll be able to uh, take your, your vaccine um, and a booster shot. Uh, however, if you are experiencing some sort of symptoms of COVID, uh, you will not be able to get your vaccine. However, we do have that testing capability as well. So so if you are wanting to get a test, come on down, get your vaccine, get your booster or get tested. 
uh, this is, was kind of a last minute clinic as at Friday when we had that kind of surge. And now over the weekend, we've counted those cases, seeing that Omicron surge. Um, you know, why did the county just really wanted to push for more people to get vaccine vaccinated? You know, as we've seen throughout the holidays, that number has continued to trend upwards, uh, both inside of the jail and in the community. Uh, our numbers inside of the jail at this point were about 60 inmates that are tested positive for COVID. Uh, the majority of those are coming off of the street into our facility. However, we wanted to do anything that we were able to do to provide the community that option of getting vaccinated. Get vaccinated, save lives. Okay, and then just also, I know some people are like, may think, well, why should I get vaccinated if all these vaccinated people are still getting COVID? But I did notice something that Sheriff said yeah, on Friday in that press conference, the majority or at least half of the people who have COVID in the jail who are vaccinated aren't showing any symptoms. Correct. The majority of our positive cases are asymptomatic. People like you and me walking, breathing, uh, having no issues uh, with, our, with our health are those that are coming out positive with COVID. Uh, so it's imperative to get tested, to get vaccinated, to get your booster. Uh, so you're also able to help protect those that are uh, elderly and less fortunate with their uh, current uh, health. Johnny Garcia, thank you so much. This clinic open now until 530 today. Again, it's the Pfizer vaccine. They are only providing the vaccine for ages 12 and up. And if you want to get your booster shot, you must bring your vaccine card. Live from downtown, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Steph. All right, thank you, Sarah. And also keep in mind the Wonderland of the Americas Mall has a free clinic through Friday. That's happening from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. every day. New data is showing low vaccine rates for kids right here in Texas. According to the Mayo Clinic, 10.6% of kids 5 to 11 in Texas are fully vaccinated. That goes up to 52% for 12 to 17 year olds. Local doctors hope the number of kids getting vaccinated goes up amid the surge in COVID cases. New this morning, San Antonio police trying to figure out what led up to a crash involving four vehicles overnight happened on the far north side in the 3000 block of North Loop 1604 West near Bitters. SAPD says as a result of the crash, two people were taken to a hospital in stable condition with minor injuries. So far, police don't know what caused the crash, but they say speed may have been a factor. An employee with the San Antonio Police Department is facing charges related to a hit and run incident. 28 year old Jessica Clare was arrested just after midnight on New Year's Day. She is charged with felony failure to stop and render aid after she allegedly hit a man with her vehicle on Divine Street near downtown. That man suffered a non life threatening injury to his head. Records show a witness helped police capture Claire. She was released from jail on a $30,000 bond. The department has since placed her on administrative leave. The search for Lena Kill continues, now stretching into his third week. She was last seen December 20th at a playground at her apartment complex over on Fredericksburg Road. Police re-released several of Lena's pictures. They're looking for any new leads in the case. Anyone with the information to help find her can get a $150,000 reward. If you know anything, call the San Antonio Police Department Missing Persons Unit at number 210 207-7660. In your morning headlines, a long awaited verdict in the trial of former tech billionaire Elizabeth Holmes. She was known as the darling of Silicon Valley, who promised a revolutionary blood testing technology that could change health care forever, but it turned out to be a massive deception. And now, after more than 50 hours of deliberations, a jury has decided her fate. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has the details. This morning, the woman once called the next Steve Jobs could be facing decades in prison after a jury found her guilty of knowingly misleading investors about her company's blood testing technology. This verdict was definitely a mixed bag. On Monday, a jury convicted Elizabeth Holmes on some of the 11 fraud charges she faced, including a guilty verdict on four counts of defrauding the company's investors. But she was found not guilty on four counts of committing fraud against patients. That was a harder case for the government to make. There were more leaps that they had to go through in order to show the jury that this was wire fraud. Remember, this was a case about wire fraud, not about malpractice. The jury was unable to reach a decision on three other charges. 
Holm, sitting wearing a mask in court, had no visible reaction as the verdicts were read. Back in 2015, she topped the Forbes list of America's richest self-made women. Her net worth at age 31 was $4.5 billion. She claimed her company's device performed several diagnostic tests with only a single drop of blood. But then came allegations that the blood testing technology did not work as advertised. During her trial, Holmes took the stand for seven days, denying she misled anyone. She also claimed that Theranos Chief Operating Officer Ramesh Sunny Balwani was physically and emotionally abusive toward her, accusing him of controlling her daily life while the two were in a relationship. Claims he denies. I think some of that may not have been uh, as significant for the jury as her defense anticipated. While on the stand, Holmes said, quote, of course not, when asked if investors had lost money because she misled them. But during an interview with investigators before the trial, she acknowledged a number of her prior claims were not accurate. I know that we made so many mistakes. A sentencing date has not been scheduled. Holmes faces up to 20 years in prison for each guilty count, but she's expected to face far less than the maximum sentence. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. 640, about 38 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, we're going to take a look at some of the top tech trends and gadgets that we can expect to see in 2022. And welcome back. It's 644. AT&T and Verizon have both now agreed to delay the rollout of new 5G wireless technology for another two weeks. There are concerns it could interfere with safety systems on planes around airports. Both wireless companies say 5G is safe, but airlines, plane makers, and federal regulators still are not convinced. It is the end of the line for older Blackberries. Devices using the company's legacy operating system no longer work as of today. Android-powered devices with a Blackberry name are not affected. At its peak, BlackBerry had more than 80 million active users. Technology plays a big role in our lives. We use it to communicate, work, even shop, and it's improving every day. Innovations in technology this year could change the way you live. For example, experts say be prepared for more artificial intelligence devices. Smart cars are being designed to use facial recognition to alert drivers if they're getting tired. And what about smart grocery carts? Some food chains are experimenting with carts that have a built-in scale and camera so you can scan, bag, and pay as you shop. Pretty cool. We could also see more nano satellites. The next few years, SpaceX plans to deploy up to 42,000 satellites to create an internet connection anywhere on the planet. And do not be shocked if your pizza next year is delivered by this thing. One Domino store in Houston is using driverless delivery cars. We're going to check on traffic together right now. The GMSA team is keeping an eye on the roads for you on this Tuesday morning. Yes, we are seeing a few cars out there right now. Uh, I-10 at medical traffic is flowing. Traffic overall, though, fairly light. 37 at Jones, we're seeing a little bit more traffic closer to the downtown area. Yeah, but it's been pretty nice all morning, uh, even there at I-37 at Hackberry, uh, looking at Loop 1604. And things. that may be the busiest freeway in town right now. Yes, and things are still looking good. I guess uh, some kids are starting school today on Tuesday. Some of them started yesterday, so things will eventually start to pick up probably by the end of the week. And Mike, you were looking for a hint of that sunrise, and there is evidence in several of those Transkite camera shots. Yeah, it's finally starting to come up. We've got rid of the clouds that we had uh, this morning, and I love this picture. I mean, it just looks like, yep, big old spot light there which is very beautiful but if you are driving in that spotlight is right in your line of sight that's always kind of a, a tough one but that yeah it's a gorgeous picture in the beautiful blue skies out there and there's that uh, nice orange sunrise and see the clouds off in the distance that's the cloud cover that we had earlier this morning and that acted like a little bit of a blanket on top of us and so that's why one of the reasons why we didn't get anywhere near as cold as we did the past couple of mornings still got some freezing readings there but remember yesterday Everybody was well below freezing down in most everybody was down in the 20s yesterday. So Rio Medina at uh, 29, 32 at Helotus and then Hondo and Uvalde at freezing. Little bit of a, a wind chill to deal with this morning. Not bad, but we've had two of the three ingredients. Very dry air, light wind, but we didn't have clear skies overnight. But here's the uh, water vapor imagery and you can see how the moisture mid and, up, uh, mid and upper levels of the atmosphere is moving on out of here and we get this drier air, this darker shade of gray and that kind of tannish color coming on in here. And that means we're gonna have more beautiful blue skies later on today. And here's the satellite picture. And again, those clouds that were hanging around here and they have just scooted on out of here very, very quickly. All right, temperatures around the country. 
15 degrees below zero. That's the actual air temperature up there in Cutbank, Montana. Obviously, a good chunk of the country is still below freezing right now, although things have modified somewhat, uh, except up there in Cutbank. But the difference is that is not going to be coming down here, like unlike what it did over the weekend, where we got that real big chunk of that cold air. Here's the G whiz, 44 below for the wind chill right now up there in Cutbank. Cut bank. The reason why it's not coming down here, we're not getting a big, big blast of cold air, is these upper level wind lines. They're pretty much straight west to east, and we will have another front moving through here sometime late Wednesday into Thursday. Yes, we will get down close to freezing again by Friday morning, but again, it's not going to be a repeat of what we had this past weekend. And then we go in toward the, uh, the upcoming weekend. It is going to be milder. Those upper level wind, still, wind lines stay up there to the north of us. We actually get into kind of a uh, uh, southwesterly flow, and that means a lot of clouds hanging around here. Maybe a shower or two kind of doubt it. Um, wishful thinking on my part, I think as of right now, there's the next uh, little dip in the jet stream and that's going to pull that front through Sunday into Monday. But again, it's not going to be the huge Arctic blast like we had this past weekend. 58 degrees today at noon, mostly sunny skies and then high temperature about 10 above what it was yesterday, 65 and then add almost 10 degrees to that. And that's where we're going to be tomorrow. Still chilly in the morning. Front comes through then uh, sometime late tomorrow night into Thursday. It's not going to be a huge blast of cold air, although, yes, we will get down close to freezing Friday morning, mild over the weekend, and then those temperatures are trimmed off, kind of held in check, and another front comes through for Monday. Very good. Appropriate for this time of the month. Yes, indeed. We can use a little bit of rain, though. It's been kind of dry lately. We can use a lot of rain, but it's living up to the billing as far as a La Nina year, which is a little bit on the warmer side and on the dry side. Right. Yep. That's true. Yep. All right. Thank you, Mike. Just about 10 till 38 degrees. Glad you're with us. And how much do you tip your server at restaurants? What about your hairstylist or your pool cleaner? Tomorrow on GMSA, we're going to give you some new guidelines for tipping others for their services. Yeah, it's probably more important now than ever. Outside with live cam. Wow, what a pretty start to a Tuesday. Take a look at your screen just for a second as we celebrate and beginning another workday right here on GMSA. Good Tuesday morning. Coming up here on GMA, we'll start with the fight against COVID. The U.S. setting a global record with more than a million new COVID cases in 24 hours. Millions of Americans going back to school and work after the holidays. So what does it all mean? We're going to have the latest right here on GMA. A man who was trying to clean his truck told police that he met up with two men who wanted to clean him out. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. That man says those robbers also shot him in the leg. Now, it happened here in the 2700 block of Fredericksburg Road. That's the victim's truck. This was around 530 this morning. The man told police he was here to wash his truck when two men in a white SUV drove up, demanded his property, including that pickup, and then shot him in the leg when he refused. A police found the victim about three blocks away from here. He was able to run down the street, although he had been shot in the leg. Police uh, found him at a gas station there in the 3000 block of Fredericksburg Road. They say there was also a blood trail. So they actually have two scenes right now, the one here at this car wash and then the one at the gas station where the victim was found. The police did not find the two men responsible for the shooting. Uh, they took off in that white SUV, the victim taken to a hospital with non-life-threatening wounds. Reporting from the northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. As the new year begins, there are many ways you can give back to those in need here in San Antonio. Coming up today on GMSA at 9, Tiffany Huertas is live with details on a coat drive that will help make sure children stay warm this winter. Let's check on traffic. We've had a pretty lucky commute so far this morning. Mike Ostrich joins us now. He's helping us keep an eye on cameras all around traffic. Got to be honest, traffic has remained fairly light to moderate so far this morning. Even don't, looking live at 37 wreck it. I'm not <laughs> trying to jinx it. I'm just trying to fill time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, there is method to our madness, folks. Right. Yeah, I, looking around at about 20 different cameras around town, there is really nothing going on. Again, knock on wood with that. Um, obviously, it's picking up in places. 35 at Evans Road, a little bit more traffic out there. And uh, that's pretty much 
about it as of right now. 281 at Hildebrand, both directions, everything is moving along pretty well. Just soak this picture in for a moment. Absolutely gorgeous sunrise. A couple of clouds off to the uh, off to the east, and those were the clouds that were sitting on top of us overnight, which helped to keep temperatures up a little bit. I mean, it's still jacket weather out there. 30s got a couple of freezing readings, but not as cold as the past couple of days. We're going to make it up to 65 then later on this afternoon. So nice looking afternoon. Thank you very much, Mike. Yeah, thank you. And thank you guys for joining us today. We'll see you back here at 9. Good Morning America is coming up next.